All right, morning, guys. Uh, it is morning. Uh, I think time's about, uh, about 11 o'clock, something like that. So it's not ideal time to come down to the river. Uh, it's about 20 degrees already today. It's uh, Easter bank holiday. It's the Saturday. Um, but I've come down because I've got a free pass. The reason being is because I've got to take the, uh, no, I haven't got to take the, taking the family to Woolacombe later uh, onto the beach, do a bit of surfing uh, this afternoon and spending the evening at Woolacombe on the beach. So I've been allowed to come down fishing this morning. What I thought I'd do is try and give some tips um, for beginners because we're all very aware in fly fishing that not many young guys or new guys start. Quite often they're put off by how technical they think it is or how uh, expensive it might be. So I'm going to try and give you some advice based on my experience and what I use. I class myself as a budget fly fisherman. So hopefully any tips I give you will help you get into fly fishing. It's not complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive. I'm not going to give you advice on still waters um, because I very rarely fish still waters. Um, I do occasionally, but it tends to be in the winter when the fly fishing itch really does need scratching. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to run through how I start, what I do, and hopefully we'll try and get some trout. But yeah, okay, so I'll try and give you some tips and we'll see if this works. So yeah, let's try and catch some fish, guys. All right, first thing, guys, we're setting up the rod, an easy way to, to feed the rod, uh, the line to your rod. Take your fly line and double it over. That way, if you do let go of it, it won't all shoot through the eyes and back down to the reel. Right, there's my rod. My rod is a uh, Shakespeare Agility 2. It's a 10 foot 3 weight. I use a 10 foot 3 weight because it's very nice for casting a dry fly, which uh, I do mainly. Um, I've got a reel, which is a, I think it's a 4 weight reel actually. People talk about balancing the rod and the reel and basically what you want is a reel that's not too heavy for the rod and also for the rod not to be tipping down all the time, so it's tip heavy, which means it's heavier on your wrist. Um, but it just depends how much fishing you do as to whether it's really going to make a difference. My fly line has a welded loop at the end, and then I've got my leader, and this is a nine foot, uh, three pound tapered leader. And that comes down to a perfection loop, and then there's my tippet, which I've now got to replace because it's very messy, as you can see from my last trip. So I'm going to get to do that now. Right, I've got a collection of tippet material, and I'm going to go for a 5X. 5X being um, uh, just over a four pound. It's a very fine line. Let's go for about uh, just over two foot tip at length. Again, moisten the knot. And when you cut off any excess, always make sure you get rid of it. Right, so that's my tippet with perfection loop in it. So I get my leader. There's my leader knot. Feed the tippet knot through it. Get the end of the tippet. Pass that through the loop. There we go. Can't see that, I doubt. But a loop to loop connection with the tippet and the leader. My fly box is a massive collection, or well, collection of dry flies. But there's no rise. So I'm gonna go for Old Faithful, as always. 
Okay, Caddis. This one's got a little red hot spot. No idea if it makes a difference. I've already used this one, so the barb's already been crimped. All right, let's tie the fly on. A lot of you guys already, well, most of you guys already know this, but for, this is for beginners. All right, one, two, three, four, five, get the tag, poke it back through the hole, the loop, pull it down, and then moisten it, and then pull it tight. Make sure that it's nice and neat. Cut the tag off. There we go. Okay, Caddis. Relatively small one. But I'm using the relatively small one because the water's clear, the flow is, is nice and gentle. Right, adding floating powder to a dry fly. It obviously makes your fly float, but not all floatants are the same. <laughs> when people say what floatant do you use, you need to understand what you want the floatant to achieve. A gel or a liquid generally will make the materials stick together and typically make the, the fly float in the surface film, which is perfect for a dead drift. As you know, if you're watching my videos, I like to fish what I call like a live fly. I have to twitch it and introduce life to it to agitate the trout. Trout are predators and they have seconds, mi milliseconds to think about whether something's worth eating or not. They constantly want to eat. So I like to twitch a fly to agitate those trout into feeding, especially when there's not a rise. And a powder, which I use, makes a fly float on the surface film like a live insect would do because it won't break the surface tension. So, I have spent on a nice reel, but you don't have to. I've got a rod, which is 50 quid. I've got a nice fly line, but there's lots of nice fly lines out there. This is a, so it's a three weight, um, uh, three weight forward weight. Number three, forward weight floating line. Leader, tippet, and a fly. Right, I'm wearing waders. Waders again, you can get expensive waders. Mine aren't, but they keep me dry. Right, now there was a natural hair that wasn't taken by anything, so I'm not expecting a rise here because the naturals are getting away with it. Casting technique. My casting technique isn't perfect, you'll know if you watch my videos, but I get away with it. I break the wrist, quite often it looks messy, but uh, practice, just a bit of practice. All you want to do is make sure you time the back cast and the forecast. And if you're not sure how you're doing, instead of on the back cast going blind, look behind you and watch the line. And then you can see when that back, the line is extended behind you, then it's time to start in the uh, forecast, loading the rod, to propel the line forward. But I am guilty of quite often trying to push the line forward. Oh, for all my advice, this is going to be the day where I get no rises at all. I've got to say, my casting is on point, as my girls would say. When I say my girls, obviously, I mean my daughters. I haven't got a harem of women. I can't afford a harem of women, I'm a fisherman. 
Oh, it's good to fly the dry. Oh, it says, but fly wet to dry it. Lots of ways. I use one of these cheap pouches, uh, patches. I use these because these dry out because quite often I find myself wading too deep. But a patch, my Amadou patch would get wet and those things do not dry very well, I found. I cannot get them to dry properly and then I've just lost 15 quid or whatever it's cost me. Those patches cost a few quid. Stick on the radiator and it dries out as good as new. Or even I can wring it out. It's like a chamois leather, but I don't know what it is. It's synthetic. So I'm moving up the river relatively quickly. There's no point in me trying to catch where there's nothing wants to feed. There we go. I think. And it might be brownie. Yeah, splish splashing. Grayling don't do that. There you go, guys. So there's no fish rising at all then. And the Alcare Caddis brought him up. Oh no, he's a nice sized grayling. Wow. Ugh. So no worry after, out of season. Sorry, Grayling. Oh, I can never pick them up. Look at that. So there you go, guys. No fish rising. Alcare okay, Caddis brought them up. So you can match the hatch and be technical, but my advice is if you want to fly to catch fish, Okay, Caddis on the river. And then once you're more proficient, start really matching the hatch. Well, he's spectacular. Oh. Again, a non-rousing fish, non-rising fish, just poached with the Alcare Caddis. There you go. What a stupid, an amazing fish. Oh, right, barbless hook. So, to release, just put the fish in the water and a quick flick of the fly and they're off. <laughs> 